Hello, I'm Ross from Britain's Hidden History, and welcome back to another bite-sized piece of history. We're in under 10 minutes, usually about six, so aim for six, ends up seven. Uh, I try and give you uh, a discussion point about British history, things that have been hidden or, or, or controversial, perhaps, uh, things that people even dispute exist. And today, to get on with it, we're going to talk about the works of this good-looking fella, who is Gildas. Now, Gildas was a monk, also known as a, famously as a historian of the 6th century, the 500s. This is the period when King Arthur, uh, the Arthur II, the king of Glamorgan and Gwent, was supposed to have been around. And so he's incredibly famous. He's the big man. So why is he not in the work of Gildas? I mean, does this prove that it must be some sort of fiction, some sort of fantasy? Well, apparently not. Let's look at, uh, first of all, the dates. The first problem is that they, they try and date... Uh, he, he speaks about being born the year of the Battle of Baden, okay? Now, one of the first... This is a big, big problem, because one of the assumptions is made, uh, which uh, Wilson and Blackett bring into question, is there could well have been more than one Battle of Baden. I know it sounds silly at first, but if you go up there, up to the Battle of Baden, you can see it's the focal... It's the crunch point. And it's the, there were definitely more than one battle up there, so who knows, all right? That's the one flimsy piece of evidence everything hangs on. If we just try and th not take that quite so literally and consider, well, maybe it refers to other events, then we can start to make progress and maybe look at things a bit more different, uh, differently. Because one of the problems is uh, Arthur's looked for too early, all right, as we'll explain now. So, looking through this, this is from Wikipedia. It doesn't do a bad job on Gildas, really. So he's supposed to have been around from about 500 AD to 570 AD, also known as Gildas the Wise or Gildas Sapiens, a 6th century British monk. And this is the key bit, right? He's best known for his scathing religious polemic, De Exidio et Conquestu Britannia. This is a polemic. It's a rant. That's what polemic means. It's a rant. It's done with a political motive in mind. This is not some dry and dusty historical piece where this happened, that happened in this year. There's no dates, there's nothing like that. It's a rant. He's talking about the way in which they'd let themselves down, the terrible things that are being allowed to continue. We've got to get together and we've got to form an army, we're going to go up there and sort them out and kick them back out again. This is what it's about. Now, Let's try and work out when he wrote it, okay? Because this is the key here, okay? Um, never mind the rest that he's founded. Read that yourself. The key thing here is when did he write it? And let's apply some critical thinking to what's happened, rather than knee-jerk reactions, all right? If you look at his dates, 500 to 570, we'll go with that for now. So probably wouldn't have written something as major before about 530, the last uh, 20 years, he's supposed to go to Brittany and retired, whatever, become a monk. So we're looking at 530 to 550 period. Wilson and Blackett say uh, about 537, they think this was written. Then looking at Arthur, who was born about 503, round about there. He's still a young man <laughs> when this was written, okay? So he's starting to start to think about it a bit more critically. So, um, so the, the question you have to do, which doesn't seem to get asked, is... Was this, do you think this was written, um, how do I put this, after Arthur had achieved all his great achievements and won his battles and everything, but this guy just didn't bother writing about it? Or two, is the whole thing made up and nonsense? One of the best recorded characters in history is just a fiction, a myth. Or three, do you think there's a chance that this document might have been written before <laughs> Arthur got his army together and charged off up into the north of England and on into Scotland. As you can read about in Arthur the War King, was a fantastic, dramatised account of all that's going on. So the question is, we've done when, it's probably the 530s he wrote this, why did Gildas write this work? He wrote it to help get the kings together, knock their heads together and say you're British. Get together and unite your armies and drive out the people at the top. Because another assumption that's made is that the battles were against the Saxons. Was Wilson Black had explained, 
This is a huge, huge assumption it could be mistaken. There already been a big battle with the Saxons. They'd already had a thrashing. That's been covered. A, a sort of a, a peace, if you like, had been agreed, and nothing was going to happen there for a long time. You can read all this in The Walking. This gives them the chance to get together, and from Brittany and all over the British Empire, the armies got together and they go up north of England and Scotland. And this is when you get the 12 great battles that are really famous. It's then that Arthur becomes famous. He's the one who calmed the whole of Britain down and insert, in, uh, imposed his peace, which is a sort of uh, Pax Arthur, because it was uh, a rule of law and freedom of speech and all these things that's been taken for granted for generations in Britain. So what you have there is the idea that um, what the historians, historians do, unfortunately, is because they can't find him in the period they want to find him, 500 to 540, when Arthur had been too young, they go earlier. They go 450 to 500. Still can't find him, therefore he's a myth. No, go forward a bit, 540 to 570. And then you will find, um, you know, the characters match up. Uh, I'll, I'll try and get some of this in quickly. Uh, reading directly from page 27, Walk of uh, Arthur, King of Glamorgan and Gwent. On many accounts, the theory does not stand up of the Gildas thing, okay? Uh, no one seems to have yet considered the obvious, which is that when Gildas wrote his great historical sermon, De Exidio, the mighty King Arthur had not properly began his campaign to conquest. There is considerable evidence that Arthur's wars were not against the Saxons, but against the other rival British kingdoms. And no obvious proposition is that Arthur responded to the warnings of Gildas. This is a warning document, a call to arms. This means that Arthur has to be placed between 540 and 570 AD as an active warrior king, give or take a few years either way. If Arthur's achievement was to unite Britain as recorded, then this certainly makes sense. And then he goes on and explains how he ties in with the characters of the period, being used in the Mabinogi, all these kind of things, all comes together. So that's what he have to do. So he'd have written sometime between, if Gildas was alive from 500 to 570, he'd have presumably written between 520 and 550 AD. Wilson of Black, it's say about 537. And if you look at this book here, you will see there that fits in with the times. Now, a little thought I would like to add, looking at um, this analysis, which seemed very convincing to me, is one more thing. Gildas and Arthur were both from southeast Wales. They would have been in close contact. They would have um, communicated, been together, probably in the same places, all right? Although Gildas did spend a lot of time on Echni, otherwise known as Flathome. Um, he was a bit of a monk always, an academic. So there's a chance, I would say, reading this and, and getting a gist of what's in there, Gildas's writing, that Arthur might actually have got Gildas to write it. Because Arthur wanted this campaign, he wanted to unite the kings, he wanted this grand army to go up there and smash them off the, the, the island, as he put it, and, and unite everybody. So maybe the reason why Arthur, another reason why Arthur's not mentioned, is he's the one pulling the strings behind Gilda, saying, write me a polemic, I want to get all those to rally behind my flag and fly up, in, you know, drive our way up to Scotland. Uh, and smash these Picts and Scotty Eye and Angles and all these other people who need sorting out. So there you go, thought for today. I'm sure it's controversial. Tin at on, here come the comments. I hope you enjoyed it. And let's remember, we're discussing history here, okay? Uh, it's only to get upset about it. Let's enjoy it. So until the next time, peace. This is Hadouk. <laughs>